Hey folks, welcome to another VR video. Today I'm wearing something pretty cool. This is the ODG R9. Osterhout Design Group created this device and also a series of devices before it. I got to encounter the R7 unit at Silicon Valley Comic Con back in 2016. And that particular device, I stuck it on my head and I got to see by looking at a comic book page some holograms come to life, and it was really my first experience with augmented reality that was done well. I tried the Google Glass, I tried a couple of remedial other things, but I didn't really have anything where I could wear a headset on my head that looks just like a pair of glasses, really. Um, and it, I can see through it right now, I can see myself that you can see reflected back probably too in this image. and. I was pretty taken by it. I was pretty spellbound, to be perfectly honest. So I asked after my demo enthusiastically, so is this something that's out? Is this something that I can buy? And they outright told me, this is available. It's not a consumer product. We're just doing this just to kind of show it off a little bit. Uh, these are $4,500. And there's not really any consumer application for it. What you want to do is wait until next year. We're going to have something else coming out. So I waited until 2017, and in 2017 they announced the R8 and the R9, the device that I'm currently wearing. And those devices, there were pre-orders available. I didn't pre-order because it was really just pre-orders for developers. At the time I didn't have any interest in developing for augmented reality. Uh, so those devices were demoed. Uh, at multiple expos and trade shows throughout 2017. This device was used in demos at CES 2017 and AWE, or Augmented World Expo, in 2017. And I know that based on the content that's loaded on the device. And what's interesting about this device that I can't do with the end real light is if I shrink myself really small on the screen here, really small over here. I can push a button and a dot appears. So what I'm going to be doing is actually walking through the interface and showing you some of the demo content on the R9. I picked up this R9 unit through a pawn shop in Los Angeles. Now I was going to Los Angeles to see a installation of a shopping cart, a large street legal shopping cart to promote a television series called Supermarket Sweep. It's the reimagined version of a old game show uh, that premiered in the UK and then came to the United States and it's been rebooted four or five times. Um, we're gonna go to home here. And while I was going to Los Angeles, uh, I searched Craigslist just randomly and I found a different device that I'm gonna talk about in another video. And then I also found this when I got there. Uh, <laughs> the pawnbroker was impressed at my knowledge about virtual reality and my passion about virtual reality. And when I had already agreed to purchase the other device said, hey, do you are you interested in other VR things too? And I said, yes. And he pulls out this little bag, basically. I'm trying to find it here. Ah, here it is pulls out this little bag and he unzips it and inside is this headset and I'll, I'll show the bag and everything off in more detail later but as soon as he unzipped the bag and put it on the counter I recognized this and I thought it was just an R7 unit and I was already excited and I already was interested in purchasing it um, but then he said it was an R9 and I verified based on inside the uh, arm of the glasses and to me, this is priceless because this is actually a prototype. Um, so I said yes, and I picked it up, and I brought it home. Uh, what I didn't realize is what demo content would be on here. So we'll start off, uh, Trees here is a piece of demo content uh, based on National Geographic. This is a 360 degree film. Uh, I don't know if you can hear what's happening, but I can actually look up and down and all around. And the image is incredibly sharp. I'm looking at the trunk of a tree right now. And this is Wendy Baxter. She's climbing a tree. 
And as you can see, I can just look up, down, all around. And I can still see my kitchen. And I can still see the computer in front of me. So it is a bit translucent, but it's a very sharp and very vivid image. The R9 runs on a... Well, it's supposed to run on a Snapdragon 835 processor. I'll show you in a minute that this one's kind of lying. <laughs> there is no 835 processor in this particular headset. Um, in fact, let's go do that now. I will say while I'm pulling up this next application, uh, which I'm going to cheat and use this all apps section on my handy remote control phone, um, what I can say for sure about this device is it is a demo unit that was used for marketing purposes and you can tell. So I'm opening a program right now called Inware. I believe it's called Inware. Yeah, Inware. And I'm going to show you based on the device profile here. First of all, we'll click on system and it says it's an Android 7.11 device, that's true to form. That's exactly what the marketed OS was, was Nougat. Uh, it says it's a Qualcomm processor, it says it's the bootloaders and user debug mode, root is detected, um, which it should be because this is a developer unit and a device that was used for prototyping. It says it's a QC reference phone, and it's got MSM8996. Now, MSM8996 tells you one thing. That's the GPU, essentially, of the system on a chip. Now, if we go to device, though, that's where things start to get confirmed. So you've got that same MSM8996. You've got model number R9. Uh, it's got a built-in screen. It's actually got two at 1920 by 1080. They're currently running at 60 hertz. Their density is at HDPI 240. Uh, there's no HDR support. Its default orientation is landscape. There are two displays. It's actually rendering a 50 degree field of view overall. So that, that's all well and good. That seems to match the, I mean, it's got the Osterhout design group. Everything matches what you'd expect. Then if you click on hardware, this is where it starts to fall apart. The APQ8096 is actually the Qualcomm Snapdragon 820, not the 835. So this is actually an underpowered unit, um, which is fine for what it is. Uh, the frequency range is similar. Um, cluster 1 at 2188 MHz, cluster 2 at 23.42, or 2342 MHz. So it's kind of the same spec uh, as far as speed as the actual advertised version of this device, but it's got an Adreno 530 renderer. All of this is the 820 series, not the 835 that was advertised in this device. But when you're using the device, um, the other uh, thing is I believe they advertise as having six gigabytes of memory. This one, as you can see, only has four. Um, but when they were demoing this device, you know, they showed actual content that they intended to have on this device. So if we go a little bit further over uh, this Planet SVR3, if we look at this, it's just saying made with Unity. And now it loads up and you can see the planet Earth here with a satellite. And I can kind of lean in and move around it. So you can see it tracked a bit and you can see the sun there. Um, and this actually looks really impressive from within the glasses. Um, I almost feel like the color scheme and the, the glasses themselves, the images within the displays of the R9 here are a little bit better than what I get with my Unreal Light, which is a device that's still forthcoming at this time. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll let the Earth orbit for a moment. I'll continue talking. 
uh, this device, when this was shown off at AWE, this was one of the demos that they showed. The next demo I'm going to show off is in this OMP wearable uh, player. So if we click on this, you can see kind of like a red squared room. It's currently loading some content. Ah, oh, there's the content. So there's Kelloid Hospital. Go to Kelloid Helicopter here. Do I just click? There we go. So I'm loading some content up. And I don't really know how it knows where to put the information. This doesn't have any sound, um, but I can look around and you can see the, I think it's Evera, I think that's what it says, Air Force. I can't really tell because the letters are cut off, not because I can't see the resolution. You can see the floor here, you can see the roof of the plane, helicopter rather, and you can see these cool robot dudes. So these are the demos that were shown off at AWE. Uh, one other demo that was shown off at AWE will exit out of this app was this ARUI. And this was supposed to be like just touting how you'd navigate through the user interface. Um, the user interface in the R7 was called Radical OS. I don't know if R9's user interface was also going to be called Radical, but it was going to be a newly designed version of the interface. Uh, this, what you're about to see, well, that's in Gadget in 2017. It's talking about MWC. Uh, one of the things I can say is the clarity of the text is fantastic here. We just saw something about the Indie Mega Booth. Uh, if it stops scrolling for a moment, I can actually read. So it says FCAT VR. Oh, man, it, it moves so quickly. Anyway, let's move over here. So if we look over here, now we've got a Spotify window open. We move up here. We've got a, a Google Gmail account. Looks like there was a new sign-in to Firefox on Mac. And then over here, there's a bit of a movie trailer playing. Again, no sound on this demo, but it gives you an idea of, you know, the virtual UI interface that they were going for, where you could just kind of peer between different windows and one would get larger when you focus. Uh, but if we go back out here, we can scroll over again. Oops, wrong direction. There was also this LG content. Now, this is the thing that's really impressive. If I watch this, what I like about it is we've got these trains here, and you're going to hear the sound probably because it's really loud. And this is all 3D right now, what I'm looking at. Now it says it's 4K. And it looks like if I look at the screen, you're actually seeing dual image. I'm only seeing one 3D image in front of me. Uh, but it, it's really cool in inside the application. There's that whale um, <laughs> that everybody uses, like Magic Leap had one and Real had one. It's pretty impressive in the ODG device. Check it out. Anyway, so this one was cool. I really liked it. Um, and there's a couple of other experiences as well. So I'm, I'm playing through all of these experiences, but when I bought the unit, the battery was completely dead. I was worried that I'd never be able to use it again. And I picked it up just because it was a prototype and it had that sentimental value of, I tried this and this was the device I wanted. Um, but it gets even better as I go because there's even more content on here. If I move over a little bit further, uh, there's this Alien Covenant trailer. And this is where it gets interesting because Fox, through a company called Fox Innovation Labs, it was a subsidiary of Fox that was experimenting with virtual and augmented reality, created a couple of experiences, um, mainly in VR. Um, Alien Covenant had its own application, which I'll get to in just a moment. But for right now, just open this. This is actually just a 2D trailer of the film. This is like to, to whet your appetite, essentially. And it's really just a 2D film. There's, there's no, like, if I move around, it's staying stationary in front of me just in the 50-degree field of view. It's a beautiful screen, 
It looks great, but it's just a, a, a 2D, 2D picture. There's, there's nothing else to it. The part that I find super cool about this device, though, is the last thing I'm going to show you. Uh, there is a web browser here. There's some other information available. There's, there's other applications kind of hidden with it, with it outside of the menu system within the device uh, that I can access using reticle remote on my phone um, or using visor or using another program through my PC. But this last piece that I'm going to show you, this Fox Alien application, I have to scroll over to it here, um, is something I'm going to treasure probably forever. Uh, this particular application was an AR experience developed by Fox Innovation Labs uh, in partnership with a company called Trigger. And I'm going to go ahead and launch it here. And there it says, uh, press trackpad to begin. Now, before I press the trackpad on my computer screen, I'm going to switch to an image. Uh, this image is actually the image that triggers the entire experience. Um, but it says to press the trackpad, so we'll do that. Now, at this point, you're supposed to pass off the smart glasses to a guest. So you press the trackpad again to do that. And then you want to look at this image, which I'm about to do, and that calibrates the scanner. And now, there it is. So I'm looking at some unidentified biomatter, a hollow memory. So this person is sick, definitely. There's another person running in. Uh-oh. This is an alien, so I'm wondering if something's going to happen here. Yep, there it is, bursting out of its chest. Looks a little vicious. Look at her backing away like, oh no. Now if we follow it, uh-oh. Um... And the system is offline. So that experience, it's only about a minute long, um, but that experience was pretty much exclusive to 2017 CES. Um, and I'm lucky enough to have it on a pair of smart glasses in front of me. Um, we're going to go ahead and exit out of that. I, I just... When, when I was able to get this to work also, because that image didn't come with them, I had to search the internet to find it, but when I was able to find that image, in fact, I'm going to see if I can pull it up here. Um, I'm just going to, going to do a search for uh, alien AR experience. to search for ODG as well. We got Benjamin Norris Miller here and we got Trigger Global below. Trigger Global is where I believe I found that image. Just waiting on their website to load up here. So this is the actual like teaser image for the ODG experience. And you'll see this guy, he looks smiling here, he's looking in this direction. The actual image, this is not it, um, but the actual image is this over here. Um, that blood splotch, um, a little bit more red, is what triggers the whole application with that animation and things of that nature. It's pretty cool. Um, and this was done, as you can see here, in a demo room situation um, as part of CES 2017. So I was able to trace all of that um, back to these glasses. It was pretty sweet. So one of the cool things about the ODG R9 is it also works with other Android applications as well. So I can actually play pretty much any Android content uh, up through Android 7.11 obviously. 
and it would be compatible with the glasses automatically. Those AR layers like you'd get in Pokemon Go and Ingress and other games like that work just fine. You can actually see through the camera and things of that nature. It's pretty impressive. Um, so I'm going to start actually using them with regular Android applications. Um, but overall, I'm just excited to have this prototype, to have this device that technically doesn't exist anymore. Um, and to find it randomly in a pawn shop on my way to Los Angeles to see a shopping cart in a parking lot. It's just a story that I'll share for the rest of my life, probably. Um, just I do want to show, this is the case that it comes in. It just says ODG at the bottom here. It's just got orange uh, with a charging cable and a charger inside. Nothing too glamorous, um, but also quite small, so it can hold the device um, for on the go. And I think that was really what they were looking to do uh, with a consumer device, is have it as an on the go device. Uh, something that you would not necessarily wear all day, and I don't think it's meant to be worn all day. It's, you know, it feels like a pair of sunglasses rather than a pair of real glasses. I can see through it, but it's darkened. It's not going to be comfortable for all day use. Um, but I think they were envisioning, you know, people watching movies on the bus and things of that nature. Um, it's an all-in-one device. I'm using a phone to connect to it right now for the remote to, to actually, like, navigate the menus and things of that nature. But there are buttons. There's a little button up here that's unfortunately not functional, it doesn't seem, on this device. Um, and then there's buttons on the bottom here as well that uh, there's a scroll wheel, there's two volume controls, there's a power button, uh, there's a menu button, and there's a back button. So all of those features are all in one on the device. Um, similar to the Gear VR's navigation, all the buttons being on the outside even though you had your phone inset into it. Uh, but this is all in one. It's super light. Um, it's something I could probably wear out and use all day if I needed to. Um, and it's cool because I can see a window into what 2017's AR was like. Unfortunately, the company failed. Uh, they tried to do a little bit too much all at once. They had a very small company. I believe they only had like 40 or 60 employees. And they were trying to crank out thousands of orders of the R8 and R9 units, this being the R9. This was the prosumer model. And then there was also a... R8, which was intended for consumers, that had uh, stereo cameras on it, uh, but otherwise very similar specs um, with a 40 degree field of view instead of a 50 degree field of view. Uh, the R8 was supposed to retail at a little under $1,000. These were supposed to retail at anywhere from $1,900, $1,800, $2,100. The price kept changing as the specs kept changing. Um, and that's the other thing is as they kept iterating, they kept changing the specs of what the pre-orders were for. Um, there were, again, some units that did go out to developers. So there are some different versions of the R9 and R8 units that are out there in the world. Uh, but never a consumer launch, and, and unfortunate, because I kind of prefer these. I like how they fit better. Um, it's not slipping off of my face, which the Enreal Light unfortunately tends to do. Um, it's nice and kind of clamped down, um, but I, I feel like, you know, this is a good successor to what the HoloLens was. It's a more open platform. You don't have to worry about Windows Holographic. You can just run regular Android applications. I can build an APK using Vuforia or something of that nature and totally run it off of this, unfortunately, sadly, not available unit. Um, but it's something I'll treasure. It's something really cool, um, and I may make more content using it for the channel. Probably not. I'm probably just going to experiment with it on my own. Uh, but I wanted to share this look into at least what was bundled on the device and some of the secrets and uh, marketing that they did using it as a 835 Snapdragon processor, even though it was an 820, and shortchanging the RAM and things of that nature. Uh, still making it believable though for those that did demos with it. I hope you've enjoyed this video and this look at a device that uh, unfortunately no one can really buy anymore. Uh, if you are someone that was a developer working on content for the ODG R9, 
I would love to be able to try out your application if it's something that you're able to share. If it's something that's compatible with the R9, the R8, or R7, I believe it will work with this device. So uh, feel free to get in touch with me either through the comments or through uh, my business email contact on my About page. Until next time, get out there and enjoy some VR or AR for yourself. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye now.